The Star Wars galaxy was no stranger to conflicts, which in fairness is to be expected considering the name. Galactic civilization frequently had to face external threats, ranging from bloodthirsty empires to opportunistic raiders to manipulative Sith Lords. But some conflicts weren't just threats to civilizations, some were threats to the galaxy itself. We'll be discussing three such threats today, the greatest dangers that the galaxy as a whole ever faced. Attention, Sergeant on deck! First up, we have Abeloth, the bringer of chaos. Originally known as the Servant, Abeloth was a mortal woman who came to serve the Ones, the powerful force wielders that would come to inhabit Mortis 100,000 years before the Battle of Yavin. Over time, she became a beloved part of the family in her own right, taking the role of the mother and playing a major role in resolving conflicts between the daughter and the son. But Abeloth was still mortal, as opposed to the beings she loved, and as she grew old, she began to grow desperate as well. Seeking immortality, she drank from the font of power bathed in the pool of knowledge, becoming a twisted, dark side entity in the process, a completely unnatural being. Horrified by what she had done, the ones withdrew to Mortis, leaving Abeloth on the jungle planet they all had once called home. To ensure that she didn't escape, the son and the daughter enlisted the help of the Kilix, and using massive gravitational weapons like Centerpoint Station and Sinkhole Station, they pulled black holes through hyperspace, forming an impassable cluster around Abeloth's planet. That cluster of black holes was called the Moor in later years, and was infamous for being the primary obstacle of the Kessel Run. The son and daughter released the Kilix from their influence and returned to Mortis after imprisoning Abeloth, but the prison that they had created was imperfect. Abeloth was still incredibly powerful, and whenever there was a major change in the current of the Force, the bringer of chaos was strengthened and attempted to escape. Each time she did so, the son and the daughter returned to the Kilix and drove her back. That is, until 21 BBY, when both the son and the daughter died during the mission to Mortis. The next few decades did a great deal to alter the current of the Force, and the final blow came when Jason Solo fell to the dark side in 40 ABY, becoming Darth Cadus in a bid to change the future. This awakened Abeloth, who once more made a bid to escape by drawing Force sensitives toward the Moor. To make matters worse, Centerpoint Station was destroyed in a war that Cadus started, a war from which the galaxy was still recovering in 44 ABY, when Luke Skywalker learned of her. In short order, Abeloth became strong enough to destroy Sinkhole Station, allowing her to escape into the galaxy at large. She battled both Jedi and Sith, and plotted to plunge the galaxy into such chaos that all life within it would be extinguished. Using her powers of shapeshifting, possession, and her gift for manipulation, she managed to evade Luke Skywalker and quickly rise to power, getting herself elected as Chief of State of the Galactic Alliance. With political control of the whole galaxy and direct possession of a number of important figures, Abeloth came close to galactic domination, which she would be able to use to destroy civilization. However, Abeloth was confronted by Luke Skywalker and Darth Krait before her plans could come to fruition. The three engaged in a long and grueling battle, but Skywalker and Krait ultimately emerged victorious when, one by one, their allies began killing off all of Abeloth's avatars, the beings she had possessed. This greatly weakened her, allowing Skywalker to apparently kill her. But as Luke knew well, such a powerful abomination was not that easy to kill, and he believed that Abeloth would return to threaten the galaxy once more. Next up, we have the ones everyone should know would be on this list, the Yuzhan Vong. The Vong were a masochistic alien species from another galaxy, whose invasion of the Star Wars galaxy in 25 ABY ended up being the deadliest war in galactic history. The Vong abhorred traditional tech, instead using unique forms of biotechnology for everything from weaponry to hyperspace travel, and their society was built around a caste system enforced by genetic engineering and the worship of a pantheon of bloodthirsty war gods. They were also unique in that they existed outside the Force, having been cut off from it for the terrible things they had done. Thousands upon thousands of years before the rise of the Empire, the Yuzan Vong engaged in an endless series of war that left the entire galaxy lifeless and uninhabitable. And so, they set out across the intergalactic void to find a new one. 
Traveling in massive world ships, they eventually approached the galaxy we all know and love, which they saw as weak and ripe for the conquest. For decades, they scouted it out and were disgusted by what they discovered. Galactic civilization was abhorrent to the Yuuzhan Vong, and so they resolved to destroy it. The Yuuzhan Vong invaded in 25 ABY, exploiting the instability of the New Republic and beginning a war that lasted for four years. The Vong sought to claim the galaxy as their new home, but after scouting it, they had developed additional goals as well. They sought to destroy the galaxy as it was known, to transform its planets and either exterminate or re-engineer its native species. They didn't just destroy worlds and commit genocide as a matter of conquest, they saw the destruction they unleashed as an act of religious purification. In the words of Warmaster Tsavong La, we do not live side by side with impurity. Your civilization is built on abominations. Your galaxy is polluted. We have come to cleanse it. The Yuuzhan Vong were so severe a threat that the New Republic, the Imperial Remnant, and indeed the entire galaxy came together to fight them off, and the Vong still almost won. They successfully conquered around two-thirds of the known galaxy, including Coruscant itself, which they renamed Yuuzhan Ta in honor of their old homeworld. However, the defenders of the galaxy, under the banner of the Galactic Alliance, were able to strike back and cripple the Vong war machine, eventually resulting in a victory in the Battle of Yuuzhan Ta. Nonetheless, the war came with an incredibly high cost, leaving an estimated 300 trillion beings dead. The greatest threat the galaxy ever faced wasn't some terrifying force entity, nor some powerful invader, but was, in fact, war itself. War, not just conflict, but protracted, grueling, proper warfare, wounded the force, corrupting life itself on a basic level. Force sensitives that were exposed to long, bloody conflicts had their connections to the force slowly weakened, while even those that weren't force sensitive were negatively influenced by the shockwaves of pain and despair that war sent through the force. No one understood this better than Mitra Surik, a Jedi exile that, at the Battle of Malachor V during the Mandalorian Wars, was responsible for a terrible atrocity that destroyed thousands of warships and life on the planet below. The act was so grave that Surik was cut off from the force entirely. Ten years later, she confronted two Sith Lords who had been terribly warped by the effects of war. Darth Nihilus, who was forced to consume whole planets to maintain his existence, and Darth Sion, whose broken body was held together only by the sheer force of his hateful will. The unnatural states of both Sith Lords were the result of years of war. As part of stopping them, Surik travelled to a variety of war-torn worlds, all of which still bore the scars of what happened there. The planet Dantooine had been subjected to an attack during the Jedi Civil War that destroyed most of its infrastructure and killed scores of people. And yet, the scars on that world stretched far beyond the damage that had been done to its civilization. The planet's wildlife had become vicious and predatory, upsetting Dantooine's ecosystem. On Duxon, the weight of a bloody battle that had happened during the Mandalorian Wars lingered still ten years later, driving the beasts of its jungles mad. And in Korriban, the ancient homeworld of the Sith, Surik encountered a planet that had been completely annihilated by war, leaving scars that made the world a beacon of the dark side. Even tens of thousands of years after the initial atrocity, Korriban was still a thoroughly corrupted world. Malachor V itself represented the worst of what war could do to a planet. During the battle here, a weapon called the Mass Shadow Generator annihilated the world and crushed thousands of ships into it, killing all aboard. But the worst damage done to the planet was not caused by the super weapon, but rather the mass death from the battle. Malachor itself became a gaping wound in the force. As a result, the life forms left on Malachor mutated into terrible storm beasts, and what was left of the world was constantly racked by destructive lightning storms. All who walked the surface of Malachor V could feel the weight of what had happened there, and the force sensitives that set foot on the planet were typically drawn to the dark side by the sheer horror of it all. Because of how it wounded the force, war was a threat to all life in the universe. The sheer pain and horror it created warped life in terrible ways, strengthening the unnatural influence of the dark side or weakening the force itself. War isn't as easily identifiable a threat as Abeloth or the Yuuzhan Vong. 
You can't put a face on it, so to speak. But at the end of the day, it was far worse than either of them. Neither Abeloth nor the Vong were capable of the sheer devastation war could cause to the Force. They threatened the life of an entire galaxy, but neither were quite so destructive as to threaten life itself. So those were the three greatest threats the Star Wars galaxy ever faced. But what do you think? Do you agree with our picks? Do you think we missed anyone or anything that could have been included in this video? Let us know in the comments section below. And just before you go guys, make sure you check out those links in the description below. If you want to talk to me and other Star Wars fans such as yourself, make sure you check out our main Geatsleys Discord. If you just want to play games with other Star Wars fans, then do check out our Gary's Mod servers. All of these links are in the description below. Anyways guys, as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.